Hey folks, Dre Crawford here. Just doing a little remodeling around the house again. I can say not remodeling the house, but I decided to go ahead and do the last phase for my family room setup, which is a 7.2 system. Yeah. type of guy I don't really need to go out and buy the newest thing out there uh, depending upon if it's a great need or not but I'm not one to jump on the uh, newest trend or the newest item that comes out every uh, few months because we know when technology uh, strikes uh, it, as soon as you buy it from the store it's old news so like I said I'm doing the last few touches to my uh, 7.2 system in the family room of the house and I went ahead and decided to go ahead and stay with the Fluence uh, theme. I have a pair of the uh, Fluence uh, XF, or I guess that's a, it's a XF8L as my uh, main uh, towers in the family room, anchored by a, a pair of SVS PB4000s and with a Polk ES35 center channel. And that uh, holds up the uh, the Vizio 55-inch OLED screen that I have. The ones I'm going to be switching out are going to be the side surrounds, which I've had some speakers there. I would say these speakers are no longer made. Uh, I've had them in use in my system, I would say, close to over 20 years. Uh, they were uh, a part of the, uh, the higher-end brand of a Radio Shack called the Optimus brand. And they made these wedge all weather speakers uh, sealed that were great for surround and surround back speakers. So I've held on to them for years, but I decided to go ahead and just switch them out. So uh, on the sides, and I'll give you a picture of what my system looks like so you'll get an understanding here. Let me go ahead and share this screen. Here we go. So you see where the setup is at. And uh, how our couch, this is not the scale. The couch is not that long or, the, or that big. But like you say, I'm about 10 feet away from the screen and the fronts. Uh, it's an L-shaped uh, family sitting unit there. And you can see where the side surrounds are right there uh, pretty close. And then the rear surrounds are another eight feet behind, which would be uh, the eating area off the kitchen. If you look over here, this is like a, the front, uh, there's a bathroom here, but in the hallway and the front door. So this is kind of like a little entryway here that comes into. So this is open space there. We got a little closet there, solid wall, and then the entrance into the kitchen area. So I have kind of like a uh, cabinet here, but below that is open space. So this is what I always have to be concerned with because this is open space here and I got to make sure the speakers are pretty much in line uh, in the right area so I don't lose sound on this side of the room. The other side of the room here, uh, solid wall is a window here, fireplace next to that, and then this is all solid wall. On the back here with the rear surrounds, uh, a little bit of wall there, where the surrounds are mounted on, and there's a large sliding glass door that leads out to the backyard. So those are the dimensions of what I have here. And like I said, I've, I've already replaced uh, the side surrounds already with the uh, Fluence uh, XL SBs, uh, bipolar speakers. I've always wanted to try bipolar speakers. Uh, I've used direct, uh, they say mono drive or direct uh, drive speakers. And they work well, especially when I had this in a 5.1 setup. I didn't have the size around here, just back here. A the mono uh, pole speakers gave you a great immersion effect because they're so far behind the seating position. Everything just came right into the sweet spot, which is right about in here of the listening area. So I went to 7.2 a few years back. Uh, then I had these, and then... You 
then I kind of learned a little bit how having direct or mono uh, poll speakers can take away from that immersive sound a little bit because most of your surrounds uh, sound is going to come from these side surround speakers here, not so much from the rear surrounds as we might think they are. So that's why I want to go with the uh, bipolar here because that way it still gives me that immersive feel of being in the middle of what's taking place on the screen. It's almost like I see it on the screen. I'm only 10 feet away of what's happening. And having these bipolar speakers here, it gives it that great touch. And then I'm going with the uh, the Fluence uh, XL uh, SBs in the rear. So I've got one other thing. I'm be everything from the fronts to the sides to the rear will be a, a matching look, and also a matching uh, tonal tone. I don't know if that's that word, but it's a, a nice tone because. All three speakers, sets of speakers, all share, share the same tweeter. This one has the size round, has the older mid-range uh, woofer design. The rears and the fronts have the, the newer uh, fiberglass or whatever it is, woven material in the front. And like I said, I got the SVS uh, BP4000s to anchor. Uh, like I said, you don't hear them, you feel them. And that's what I love about these. And anything about doing with subwoofers, you don't want to hear them, you want to feel them. So if you have to worry about hearing the bass, that's not what you want. You want to feel the bass or feel the subs is what you want to do. This Polk ES35 replaced the older Polk uh, Center uh, 10 they had there. The, the Center 10 is in my office space where I'm at now. Great uh, front speaker. This one, this kind of intrigued me. I'm not disappointed. I picked this up about a year ago, and it did, it's not disappointed. This gives a nice little uh, more of a, I would say, a openness to dialogue area. Just because it has the uh, total of six uh, mid-range drivers with the uh, center tweeter in it. So you get a more of an expansive uh, dialogue there in that area. So I can't complain at all. So I will give you a, a parting uh, shot of the room, a regular shot with the room, and go from there. But this is just me kind of completing my little, I want to say dream, because, uh, you know, there's one thing about when you are married and you're trying to use whatever space the wife allows you to use uh, for your uh, system setup. She appreciated when she's in there watching TV but she doesn't appreciate the equipment that causes that pleasure when she's sitting there watching it. So sometimes you have to make compromises. I would love to go with maybe a higher level, uh, the the high end poke system, or maybe uh, uh, maybe dabble in uh, some of the Eclipse or uh, Cantons or or Kefs. But you know, keeping things in, in a realistic manner with budget-wise situation. Like I say, I have other hobbies I deal with playing golf. This is not my also. This is not also my only uh, surround system. I have a backyard system that has a 180 inch screen, a 4K projector, and it's a 6.1 system for my backyard system. I have another 5.1 system in the master bedroom. And so, and there's a uh, 3.1 system in this office space that I'm sitting in right now. So uh, this is not the only area that I have to buy equipment for, plus the two channel setup in the living room that has the Fluence uh, Signature Series tower speakers in there. So, uh, you know, I like to be able to have decent sound. I don't have to be the elite level sound, but I would say it's, it's mid-range, budget to mid-range uh, level equipment that does well. Uh, especially with the home theater in this room. So this again, this is Dre. I appreciate you guys stopping in, watching information. I know I don't, I don't put out a lot of videos on this channel. Most of my work is focused on my drone channel under Recovery One Drones. Feel free to stop by. Uh, if you see something you like, drop a thumbs up or even subscribe to catch a lot of my content on there. That is That is a side business I have. So that's where my focus is at. I hope you enjoy uh, down the road. And like I say, uh, just keep keep doing what you're doing. 
nothing wrong with that. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye. I'm